Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're all doing good. This is uh, your Strully Cordell and uh, the magnificent Nodrick Kara right next to us. Um, how are you doing, Kara? Thank you, good. And yeah, are you in black and white? Just mm -hmm. the first question. Cool. High five. <laughs> you said you wanted to read some original poems yeah I wrote one today and I wanted to read one I wrote yesterday as well hmm. please go ahead oh I'm curious already? yeah come on give us some poetry no. thank you <laughs> Today was a special day for me. No. A bit, a bit, uh, a bit weird. Yeah. So the poem I wrote today called "The Rain," and it talks about a person. Uh, dealing with sadness by by absorbing nature yeah. warm drops run down my face I'm not crying it's the rain dark clouds shading their gray becoming white and fluffy once again I look and listen. I can't feel. My body is a temporary shell. But nature, on the other hand, is a treasure jewel, a godly spell. Small birds are singing in the rain. They happily rejoice in water. I look and listen. Oh, I sing again, like birds in rain, like nature's daughter. So pretty. Thank you. That was actually a really good reading too, for uh, one of the first, you know, for being written today or yesterday. Was this actually the poem you wrote today? Yes, I wrote it today. And yeah, I was sad today. Then I went to the forest. I listened to the birds, and they like happy all the time. Even when there is rain, the birds actually sing. It's just interesting because I thought when there is rain, birds stop singing, but it's not what I observed. Actually, if there is rain, birds still sing. Mm. They not. Like for some reason, not louder than the rain. It's the same. It's just harder to hear them because of the rain, but they still do, and it made me think of this poem. I like it. I like it a lot. It's a nice metaphor of uh, uh, from going from a sad image to something pretty. I also like the part with the clouds changing colors and you know being coming white and fluffy and yeah it's cute i like it yeah it's 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 funny like the clouds when they're dense and full of i don't know sadness and water in them they just need to cry out all of it and then they're just happy again just like clouds yeah. nature is extremely <laughs> it's extremely uh relatable uh, I don't know, being somehow it's like us, but but not always uh, treasured as us. I don't know. I love it so much. Mm. Yeah. And do you have some originals? Um, if you want, I'll read you the poem about um, 
um, that picture I picture poem black and white picture I wrote oh the noir yeah yeah I always liked it I love to hear that I actually translated it in French too yeah it doesn't rhyme or anything it's just it translation it's still French language is like a melody <laughs> I like to hear that all languages are like melodies honestly I enjoyed a lot two readings yesterday Thank you. Like a uh, Russian translation of Baudelaire. Mm -hmm. I could hear it. Honestly, I could hear that it was a really good translation. <coughs> oh, my computer is making so much noise lately. Sorry, I'm sure it's, it's being recorded. <laughs> no problem, come on. Yeah. We are here for poetry, not for high standards <laughs> yeah i know but yes so my poem i read it to you in english and then in french yeah thank you a noir shadow formed from two silhouettes melting within each other through a sweat opposites like picture in black and white that have become one through the play of lights one is a she the other is a he. They play with their hands and kiss each other's and seems to belong even though they are free. And at their own fingers tip they shudder. One can only imagine what they do beyond our sight in the shadow far through. Mm. French now? And in French. Une ombre noire formée de deux silhouettes fondant l'une dans l'ombre, dans l'autre à travers leur sueur, opposées comme des images en noir et blanc, devenues uniques par des jeux de lumière. L'un est une aile, l'autre est un lui. Il joue Avec leurs mains, ils s'embrassent et semblent s'appartenir, même s'ils sont libres, et qu'au bout de leurs doigts, ils tremblent. On ne peut qu'imaginer ce qu'ils font, au-delà de notre vue, dans l'ombre, au loin. I love it so much. love it it did sound like it rhymed to me, to me i don't know but because it's i think it's the magic of the french perhaps and i remember from this poem the l'ombre is the shadow yes it is and in russian it's um tins tin oh i think we lost Kara and Adric for ah there you are. Yeah, here I am. So and the uh, poem I wanted to read called In Paradise. I will read it first in English then in Russian. I walk around the edge with one foot. I stay here. The other steps to paradise where my friends are near although they're glad to see me they don't want me to stay go be alive there kiddo your pants will soon fly away and even if the if time divides us and the past went the other way we will walk with you here to keep the sadness at bay. I'm here. I sing again. My friends gave me a good advice. We go together around the edge, keeping one foot in paradise. Mm. And 
originally it was written in Russian. Uh, it's called Vrayu. Rai is the paradise. What is the Rai in, in French? You mean paradise? Ah, also paradise? No, no. I'm asking you if that's what you... Uh, yeah, paradise. Yes, yes. Le paradis. Okay, le paradis. Yeah, uh, that means the, the heavens, the paradise. Yeah. Я хожу по краю. Одной ногой я здесь остаюсь. А другой я в раю. Гуляю с друзьями и песни пою. Хоть они мне и рады, то к себе не берут. Поживи еще, детка, твои боли пройдут. И пусть разделяет нас время, и пусть разделяет нас путь. Мы с тобой остаемся разделить твою грусть. Я здесь, я снова живу, гуляю с друзьями и песни пою. Мы ходим вместе по краю, одной ногой оставаясь в раю. Beautiful. You made it rhyme in both languages, didn't you? Yeah, I yeah. did. It's hard for me to listen to all the rhymes in Russian. So I can hear them. Thank you. It's 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 the one which was like um, which I could sing, like I could I, I hear the melody for it, mm -hmm. like it's easily sung. Actually, uh, maybe maybe we will record it you like one day as flutters you know yeah, for so sure I, yeah i love it so much so uh, yeah the, it, this one i wrote yesterday <laughs> i had 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 two productive days uh, of, of poem writing it's nice I, I guess i'll have to read something now of course you have to <laughs> okay I read this one. When I come out of the darkness into light, I become as blind as when I come out of brightest place and am drawn into darkness. Both darkness and light inspire me fright, as if prolonged exposure brought a drought of our nature. I turn to catharsis, purging the bright and purging the dark until all that is left is the void within. No hope means no despair, no joy, no tears. I forget from my life all the landmarks, nothing left wait out and nothing left within. I abandon all greed and all my fears bare naked with no coins and the mind bare stripped of my love drained by life and hollow i am both all seeing and completely blind there are no more reasons to be scared in the void with no shadow nothing glows beyond fear and hope i find Peace of mind. And I actually also translated this one in French. Yeah. Can yeah. you read it? Yeah. Quand je sors de l'obscurité vers la lumière, je deviens aussi aveugle que quand je sors de l'endroit le plus lumineux et je me noie dans l'obscurité. L'obscurité et la lumière m'inspirent la peur, comme si une exposition prolongée provoquait une sécheresse de notre nature. Je me suis tourné vers la catharsis, purger le clair et purger l'obscurité. 
jusqu'à ce qu'il ne reste que le vide intérieur. Aucun espoir signifie aucun désespoir, aucune joie, aucune larme. J'oublie de ma vie tous les repères. Rien ne reste en dehors et rien ne reste à l'intérieur. J'abandonne ma fortitude et toutes mes peurs. Tout nu et sans le sou et l'esprit nu, dépouillé de mon amour, vidé par la vie et creux. Je suis à la fois clairvoyant et complètement aveugle. Il n'y a plus de raison d'avoir peur. Dans le vide, sans ombre, rien ne brille. Au-delà de la peur et de l'espoir, je trouve la tranquillité de l'esprit. Clairvoyant, is it clairvoyant? Yes. Clairvoyant. I could hear it like somehow I picking up on on, on French words mm. um, when and you read and they are actually similar to the English one. Yeah. When did you write it? A few days ago, perhaps a week ago. I'm not sure. It's hard for me mm. to tell. Uh, I don't have but a very good concept. It is of time. like a week. <laughs> yeah, but if it's a week ago, you know it. That it's a week ago. I hope I do. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Clear uh, warrant. Time like is it. a very abstract concept. Most of the time. Really? Are, uh, like, are your days different or they're the same? All of them? If I fall asleep four times a day because I need four naps of two hours a day to be able to survive because I don't sleep one time eight hours it mm -hmm. feels like four days different okay and so it's basically you wrote it two days ago could be, could be four or five could be more oh. I don't know it's hard to, for me to say mm, did you ever think of dating the poems sometimes i do sometimes not systematically i usually date the poems by years i take one year of poetry and this will be one book or i will take a topic and then i will write as many poems as i can on that topic and then i will date mm -hmm. them at the moment i finish the book not at the moment i started nor at the moment of in which i wrote them but it is true that some poem I have dated. Uh, most of the ones I have dated are specifically linked to... Events. I will Yeah. Yeah. Like important events in my life. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got it. I mean, yeah, I started writing poetry in April this year. So it's uh, I put dates and they, are, and they differ from each other by few weeks usually. But that's nice because you can perceive the growth of your poems. You know how your style evolves, and it's gonna keep on evolving. You know, truth is, it's really hard to reach a plateau, and even if you aim for a plateau of perfection, nobody really knows when they get to it, when they reach it, when and it's not specifically a good thing. Reaching the best of what you are means that the only w place left to go is down, you know, and you want to down keep here. growing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, usually I would, if I feel I'm not evolving, I would just change the field and uh, the poems would become something else. Like I would put them into musical or s something. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's it's it's. I I feel. I feel like I'm evolving, but I don't feel like my style is evolving, because every poem I write, 
is different. It has a different structure, different style. Sometimes mm. uh, I do feel like your sense of rhythm is getting better. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I don't think that's actually something that's extremely noticeable. Perhaps it's one of those details that you didn't notice, but you're, you're getting a better sense of rhythm when you write poems. Yeah, thank you. I, I have to uh, remember all the advice you gave me to improve. Because you gave me a lot of advice. Thank you. You don't have to remember all, everything. Um, remember what's useful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, the next poem I, I, I wrote uh, when I saw a fallen tree. And actually, I, I wrote it freshly in the forest. I, I, I recorded it in the forest. And nothing changed in this poem since. Like, it's not the poem that evolved somehow. It's, it's like a, it's like a power speech. It's called, get up. Mm. <laughs> so, get up, my friend, get up. You still have more ahead. Transform your, this pain inside. Help those not yet dead you can you can you will there are more things to learn there are more roads to explore and when you're ready you will tear up this turn happiness has its price you pay it with your tears the bliss of victory is felt when you have conquered all your fears get up my friend get up you still have more to give your inner beauty will prevail you can you can you will it's a beautiful poem really yeah i love it it's oh. full of energy it's like Get up, you know. It's like yeah. one of those motivational speech. <laughs> he has a power chant. Yeah. yeah. I, I I also sang it, but I could not. Uh, I could not. I did not record it in the music. Oh. I it was like. Doo, doo, doo. Get up, my friend. Get up. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need, I need a bass guitar. You know, like not a, not a, like a guitar that gives like. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's one point that should be sung. It, it is motivational. <laughs> no, I like it read actually. You know, a lot of poems ought to be read sometimes. Honestly, like even m some of the most beautiful songs ought to be read yeah. sometimes. Because I think about some of the Bob Dylan songs, you know, when you listen to them, you I've noticed that a lot of people listen to the song, but don't listen to the lyrics. Yeah. And, and you can notice it in the difference between what they think, believe, and say, and what Bob Dylan's message was. So, um, I feel like uh, Bob Dylan words should be read, actually, sometimes. I actually honestly believe that if I was to read Bob Dylan's text, a lot of people would be offended by it sometimes. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, Bob Dylan is deep, and there was this song about pain that he wrote. Yeah. Yeah, it was raw. So, I uh, I, talking about song lyrics. Um, there is there is one song with simple lyrics, which I just like. I I love it so much. It has so much 
passion in it. And and the lyrics is not even deep, but it's just it just touches me somehow. Hmm. It's uh, it's by Danzig. Uh, it's called I think it's called Devil's Play thing. <laughs> it it runs like uh, uh, love is a pain, a devil thing, a violent storm about to be born. Mm. Just look in this eyes, see if they lie. All the things you see, you cannot deny. Yeah. It's good. Like it's, it. Oh, it's it's not. This song is dark and like it's it's heavy. A lot of lyrics are very dark, you know and hide the meaning between joyful rhythms <laughs> yeah you know the should i read a poem is that what you're saying <laughs> yes that is what i'm suggesting okay so now I, have to uh, find I, will, I will stand up shortly but i will i will i will sit down but while you read the poem We'll come back in a second. Yeah. Mm, just need to find the, the right poem. Okay, I will not stand up. Why not? <sighs> what happened? Yeah, because I have nothing. I have everything I need. I wanted to reach out, but I have. Okay, let's read something nice. Yes, nice. <sighs> I wish I could catch the moon right now or this afternoon. Bring it to you with showers of the prettiest of flowers. I wish I could bring you wealth, including my perfect health. Lay it gently at your feet. If I could lay my warm heart at your feet and give you earth as an eternal playground so you'd feel love all around. If only the strength of love could stop time and as a dove you would fly in sign of peace. Then all that's wrongful would cease. You, you are my universe. I would write a million verse to prove you my full devotion and show you all love's motion. I'd be like a lost planet without sun to rise or set and my world would be gloomy if you were not here for me. Please. Find the strength to let all love unfold to its full length. I like this song. I remember it. Hmm. Actually. But you uh, read it so calmly. I have I have heard you read it before. Like like you were like, I'll be stupid Gilly. Give me blah blah blah, including my perfect health. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so <laughs> you read it sassy before, and I also enjoyed it a lot. Right. Now you read it calmly. Like, uh, your opinion on this poem has evolved, or it's just like right now mellow? Because. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I, I get it. You did not hear my question. Sure. No, uh, wait, I didn't hear it. What was your question? No, because I told you I heard you before read this poem in an angry tone. Yeah. Yeah, and now you read it quietly. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you if your opinion on the poem has changed or just like today you're in a mood of reading it quietly. 
different mood, different tones, you know, different day. Just the way it goes. Okay. <laughs> I found I have found the song lyrics uh, which I wrote <laughs> called Come Down My Dragon. Mm. <laughs> and uh, and as it turns out, it's the favorite song of my mom now. Yeah. <laughs> she loves it so much. Like, Calm Down, My Dragon is her favorite song. <laughs> yeah, right now. Okay. <clears throat> Calm down, my dragon. Calm down. I know you're trying to save my crown. I embrace your power. I embrace your love. But now, my dragon. You grew too large. Come down, my dragon. <sighs> Come down. Mm. Sorry. Come down, my dragon. You crushing me. Come down, my dragon, and fly with me into the abyss or to bright daylight. You do have wings. I could use them tonight. Come down, my dragon. You are burning me. Come down, my dragon, and let's just sing. You have always been my loyal friend. I will remember this until the end. Come down, my dragon. You have burned all my clothes. Come down, my dragon. You have crushed my soul. Please see the beauty in bright sunlight. You do have wings, so let's fly tonight. Let's fly tonight. Let's fly tonight. Mm -hmm. Let's fly. Mm. Cute. <laughs> like, I don't know why I love it so much. <clears throat> Come down, my dragon. It's a good and you, lyric. <laughs> <laughs> you played the music to it, and it was like perfect. <laughs> you remember this? I'm glad, I'm glad we did that video. It's good. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I have really, really <clears throat> positive emotions associated with the song, even though the lyrics are heavy, somehow, like, you burned my clothes, you've crushed my soul, but it's still a light song, like, it, 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 it kind of, it, it, it kind of, <laughs> it kind of makes me feel good for some reason, <laughs> like, I, I, I slayed the beast somehow, but, like, you mm. know, instead of killing my dragon, I just, like, shh. Calm down. <laughs> Come down, my breathe dragon. In, breathe out. <laughs> Good dragon. I love you, dragon. Yeah, don't hurt me, dragon. <laughs> like it's, I don't know why I love it so much. Yeah. You had a poem which I heard once only. It's called My Demons. Yes. And I really would like to hear it again. I kind of enjoyed it a lot. I don't know why I liked it so much. It's a good poem. I think actually my demons could be sung. It's it's a poem which is uh, in this structure that I could imagine to be sung. It's the French version you're talking about, or perhaps uh, a translation I made. Oh, okay. Um, I heard the translation probably. Yeah, I, th I believe you did. But I enjoyed it a lot. In French, it goes like this. Un mauvais génie vit dans mes entrailles, qui de douleur gronde, gémit et braille. Ce ne sont ni la faim ni les blessures qui le tourmentent de manière si dure, mais bien cette attachante solitude qui le dérange dans sa lassitude. Ma cage thoracique l'emprisonne, le battement de mon cœur et son temps qu'il attend qu'il passe pour que son heure sonne. En attendant, il fait bouillir mon sang et pourrit mon esprit de ses tourments. 
Il m'entend, me parle et souvent me ment. J'en arrive à me confondre à lui, et pourtant, quand je l'entends, je le fouis, mais plus je le fouis et plus il s'approche. Il me va et me confond par des reproches. Je me perds et me retrouve en folie, tout cela à cause d'un mauvais génie. I think that's the one you were talking about. No? I think so. I think so. I have to hear it in in, in English. I will tell you if it's the one. But in French it sounded like it could be rapped as well. Right? Mm, let's try it in English. It will be a rough translation though. It doesn't matter. Like the meaning of it. I, I like the... Uh, I like the sentences. <laughs> a bad genie lives in my womb, whom of pain rumbles, groans, and screams. It's neither hunger nor wound that torment him so hard, but this endearing loneliness, who bothers him in his weariness. My rib cage traps him. The beat, the beating of my heart, is its time. That he waits until it passes, so that he, it strike, so that his hour strikes. So that his, he w that he waits until it lasts, it passes, so that it's. His hour strikes. Meanwhile, it boils my blood and spoils my mind with torments. He hears me talk, talk to me, and often lies to me. I get confused with him, and yet, when I hear him, I run away from him. But the more I run away from him, and the closer he gets, He defeats me and confuses me with reproaches. I get lost and find myself in madness. All of this because of a bad gene. Gene, genie, spirit, demon. Yeah. I love it. I love this poem. Like this one, this one you don't read often. But it sounds so true, somehow. I don't know what to say. <laughs> don't, don't worry, don't have to say anything. Mm. It's fine. I was trying to be very soft and read happy poems for you today. <laughs> ah, okay. No, but this one is, uh, this one actually stuck. Uh, I heard it once before and it stuck in my kind of memory. I wanted to hear it again because uh, check. actually uh, it made it 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 resembled my feelings somehow. It made me relate to you. You're not the first person that tells me that um, they can understand that poem. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, It's one of the f those poems which are extremely close to home for a lot of people, actually. And your, usually our favorite poems, like my poem is, is a poem which people cannot relate to, but it's my favorite poem and only I can relate to it. You probably also have your favorite poems which people don't understand and don't get. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, uh, this is one of my favorite poems. This uh, one is your favorite. Yeah, it is one of my favorite. One of the earliest one, I also uh, the w the w one of my oldest poems is also one of my favorite, even though it's mm. very naive and innocent. I can see. No, the thing is not that I, it's not that I have favorite poems. Is that I have poems that I find well written or badly written, and topics that I find well approached or not well approached. 
that that's why I say it rather than favorite or not because I couldn't mention which are my favorite poems of the most recent ones I guess I like I dance it's a good poem I think yeah but it's it's not the one I relate to actually I relate to demons <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any poems about dreams? Yes. I don't have poems about dreams and I have so much, so many dreams. I have one here for you. Should I read it okay. first in English or in French? Can you wait until I read my poem? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. To How dare you? <laughs> no, no, no. You didn't mean it like that. No, just you asked me, so I. <laughs> yeah. Carlos. Okay. I will I will want to hear it after I read my poem <laughs> in one language. <laughs> Couldn't resist like it was so like I have it in two languages. <laughs> like high five. Come on, Nadric. You know, <laughs> I, I always want you to read your poems. Oh my <laughs> Okay. Good. This one is called A Glass Figurine. And I'm sure you remember when I wrote it. It's the point from where we go. I used to believe that a glass figurine hidden from me in the attic is more precious than a diamond ring because it's fragile, unique, more aesthetic. If I dropped it, I wouldn't. But if it would shatter into countless pieces. I could never replace it because every other figurine has something it misses. I still believe that a diamond ring offered to me by many is less precious than a glass figurine. Even if for you it's not worth a penny. I will treasure it with all my heart. I will not drop it or lose it. Because people are fragile like that. They just are. They don't choose it. Mm. So beautiful. <laughs> Such a romantic. A light and pretty poem. Yeah. <laughs> and... Wolfie said it's for people who are nostalgic. <laughs> I think it's very romantic, personally. <laughs> it is very romantic. I also see that's a romantic poem. Um, well, my poem is not as pretty as yours. No. But it, it is pretty, dream? but... I mean, it's a Google translation, so it's going to sound probably like crap. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. It's too bad because Shut I had out a to Google. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I actually had a translation of it <laughs> before, but I can't find it anymore. And it's a pain um. to look. But I can do it again, I mean. Okay. So, in the kingdom of my dreams, I will pluck O moon from my lips If from your tongue You pick the sun With it I would wait for you On the dunes From the dream world While we sleep Hoping to meet you There in the mist I would wait for you Until the morning And keep my bitterness For myself Every night without you would always be the same If I worshipped you without you loving me In my eyes there would be no tiara No necklace, no ring or gem pretty enough To give it to you 
because nothing compares to your smile, your butterfly eyes and your ruddy cheeks. During my sleep, I stay awake and alone, lost in these distant thoughts, I dream of some uncertain words. <laughs> what for this boy? <laughs> and in French, in French, um, okay. Original. Au royaume de mes rêves. Je cueillerai de mes lèvres notre lune. Si de ta langue tu cueillais le soleil. Avec elle, je t'attendrai sur les dunes du monde des rêves pendant notre sommeil, espérant t'y rencontrer dans la brume. Je t'attendrai sans cesse jusqu'au réveil et garderai pour moi mon amertume. Chaque nuit sans toi serait toujours pareille si je t'adorais sans que tu ne m'aimes. À mes yeux, il n'y aurait aucun diadème, aucun collier, pas de bague ni de gemme, assez belle pour que je puisse te l'offrir, car rien n'est comparable à ton sourire, tes yeux papillons et tes joues vermeilles. Pendant mon sommeil, Je reste en éveil, et seul, perdu dans ces pensées lointaines, je rêve de quelques paroles incertaines. You know what? I found it in Russian, also <laughs> Google Translation. There you go. Please go ahead. And in Russian? Uh, it's the in the kingdom of my dreams, right? Mm -hmm. The thirty five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Царстве моей мечты. Я сделаю луну из своих губ. Если твой язык станет солнцем, я Буду ждать тебя на дюнах Из мира гроз, пока мы спим Надеюсь встретить тебя там В тумане Я буду ждать тебя постоянно Пока не проснусь, и сохрани мою горечь для меня. Каждая ночь без тебя всегда будет монотонной. Если бы я поклонялся тебе, когда ты не любишь меня, в моих глазах не было бы тиары и ожерелья. Mm, that was so pretty. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I cut it and I let it go away. Sorry. <laughs> what did you cut? Did you catch a fly? Should yes. I be the fly? Yeah, I catch a fly and I then smash it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you you're just like forcing my hand. I have to read it. You know what I have to read. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. I was relaxing in my home, listening to traffic, a naggy fly flew through my window and started wreaking havoc. I tried to chase it outside, but it kept coming back. I tried to kill it with my hand. It started fighting back. This freaky thing used my own stuff that was on my floor. I said, back off, ungodly beast. It hit me with my door. It recorded on my, on my head. It hurt my body till I cried. So, killing it is really tough. And there I lay, all beaten up, 
defeated by a fly. Mm. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And even <laughs> when I catch them, I let them go. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you cannot kill a fly. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie? Uh, and by the end of Psycho, yeah. he was sitting there in the room pretending to be his his mother. Mm, and yeah. he was like, he was sitting there, he was like, a fly. I could kill it, but I will not. So they, they think, here I am, such an elderly lady, cannot even hurt a fly. <laughs> <laughs> it was... <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock was a genius. <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> people now don't get it because it's um, nothing is going on in the films, <laughs> but there is so much humor in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course, that? of course. <laughs> Just like no, even the shower scene, like the one with the sound, <laughs> it's so funny to me for some reason. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, I love uh, Hitchcock movies actually. Um, imagine, uh, there is actually a imagine. weird theory about, um, you know, Vertigo, the movie about Vertigo. Uh, yeah. There is this theory that actually the whole movie doesn't happen because in the very first scene, yeah. he actually falls from the roof. Mm -hmm. And that's when this movie starts and somebody saves him, I think, or something like that. And there mm -hmm. is this theory that actually that doesn't happen. And from the start, he's falling, and then the whole thing is about him having like this mind-blowing story in his head as he falls. And it's true that if you look a little bit at the construct of the movie, it is plausible. It is plausible. Yeah. Okay. Can you imagine a stormy night? where there is actually a thunderstorm everything is like under rain you know for sure that people are not out on the street because the wind and everything and from time to time there is like thunderstorm and everything can you imagine cuddling up under a blanket and having a huge bowl of popcorn mm. and Chamomile tea. I, I might say beer, but like, let's say chamomile tea. Chamomile tea. Cam chamomile tea is good. I like chamomile yeah. tea. And watching Psycho that would be by fun. Hitchcock. That would be it fun. was, it is so much fun. Yeah. And there was like, but like, even imagine this shower scene like, <laughs> with, 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 yeah, with popcorn. It would, it, it would be so funny. Mm. And the eye at the end of like a bathroom lot <laughs> the and we would like sit there like drinking chamomile tea like yeah that's heavy <laughs> there is this um french pro director i can't remember his name he's really fam well he was really famous back Luc in the Bisson? no no like the back in the 70s <laughs> back 70s okay. 60s and um he made this movie i showed it once to a few of my friends and I had guys and women and I knew it would be a problem. Women? <laughs> no, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, wait. Did you say women? Yeah. How dare so, you? So many people, you know, of, of both gender. And the movie is the concept <laughs> of... what about the wait, first gender? Wait, wait. The concept <laughs> of the movie is about a husband <laughs> that gets married with a very, very beautiful woman and they have this perfect life but then mm -hmm. he starts to get jealous. Oh, how dare he? Yeah. And at the end of the movie, he kills her. <gasps> but during the whole movie, there is both his perspective and her perspective. And it's a very divisive movie. And at the end of the movie, you know, uh, the, the movie <laughs> finishes, everybody's mouth shut, they don't know what to say, and I stand up and I'm like, so, what did you guys think about this movie? And all the and girls the say, yeah, all the women were like, Jesus, that what? guy was horrible, violent, jealous, mean, and, and a criminal. And all the guys were <laughs> like, no, she deserved it. it, she was cheating on him, and I don't know what. 
and the guys, we get it, like, there you go, bro, we have your back. <laughs> it was <laughs> fucking hilarious. It was fucking hilarious because the... Well, <laughs> what, sorry? <laughs> How why do you say woman's? <laughs> woman? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, women. women. You have to yeah. say women. Women. Don't say woman's. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, no worries. But it was it was pretty hilarious to actually see people. Uh, what get is the name so of? What I is the name know. of this film? I, I would have to research it. It's been a long time since. Uh, I I used to have a, a library of movies, you know. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. It is. Um, yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. It's a psychological masterpiece. Huh? Like you would show it to the group of of different gender, like of both gender. Yeah. Okay, all genders. Yeah. <laughs> Who any there? Well, to be honest, it doesn't matter who's the gender because the trick is anybody that watches this movie with a jealous tendency will tend to understand the men behavior you know and anybody that has a tendency to actually think very strongly about equal rights and all of that will take the side of the woman and it is a very strange movie I know myself knowing myself i will probably get all perspectives i will like understand each single person like i will go, i feel you bro and you as well like i get everybody in there <laughs> like I loved it, but I thought that personally the answer wasn't there. The answer was in simply they weren't meant for each other and they forced it. Which leads mm -hmm. to, you know, something that can't work. Which leads to destruction, basically. He made yeah. this other movie that was really, really good. It's about this really rich man. And he mm -hmm. comes from this very noble uh, French family. It's an old family. And... Yeah. Um, he commits a murder oh. and then he's taken by regret and remorse and he wants to uh, repent to repent so at first uh, he goes to oh, his friends his wife sentences. and then uh, <laughs> he tells them about it and both of yeah. them ignore him straight up like like they pretend they don't hear him you know like you mm -hmm. didn't say anything that's it and then <laughs> he gets more and more anxious about it and he goes to the cops and he tells them i committed a crime i killed that person here's the weapon that person is buried there <laughs> please arrest me and the cops decide not to arrest them because of his social position because the fact that he's a noble man, such a high position in society, mm -hmm. and because his family went to the cops and told them, yeah, you have to be very sensitive with him, and I don't know what, and blah, blah, blah. So mm -hmm. he gets chased away from, from, well, not chased away, but he gets pushed away from the cop station, and he's mm -hmm. more and more tormented as the movie goes. And then at the end of the movie, he's like, borderline suicidal he's like you know if nobody's gonna punish me i am gonna punish myself and uh the family gets together intervention <laughs> intervention mm -hmm. they tell him listen you cannot fuck with the family name we don't care about your feeling you have to live with the shit you've done and if you don't, oh, like we send you to a, a crazy insane house. Insane <laughs> insane <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. And it ends like that. And it's magnificent because you see the, the, the consequence of basically that theory of a guy being so luxurious and having everything that he wants and then trying to see if he's actually capable of killing a human being because, you know, some aristocratic perspective and then discovering okay. his own humanity which tells Could him he did something you wrong. have to find now the author of this because it sounds like the author of both movies mm -hmm. was an extremely good psychiatrist no oh, yeah yeah he was i just don't remember his name i think he, he like what you are saying to me it's actually a psychiatrist like it's it's a human behavior like even behavioral <laughs> psychiatrist yeah 
I, I can't remember his name like this, I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't even know where to start searching. He mustn't have been very famous. He was famous in the 70s, but... In the 70s. Yeah, but the the movies from way back then and the movie, f the French cinema has changed a lot, you know, and preferences have changed a lot. As a child, I have seen from the 70s, I have seen Phantom Ass, mm -hmm. Angelique, and all the Louis de Finesse comedies. Yeah, those are funny. <laughs> Although, I gotta say, they're funny in a comedical way, not like an, in an intellectual way. It's not like something no. you watch and yeah. makes you think and you're like, what the fuck is going on, you know? <laughs> but Louis de Finesse is charming. Like, oh, yeah. imagine a small, bold guy and all the women like liked him. Even all the women in Russia you liked know, him. <laughs> apparently, he had a mm. horrible character. He of was course he did. Yeah, apparently <laughs> nobody could stand him. Like nobody like, could him. Like, yeah. I like it. It is. It is so plausible. Like looking at him and seeing his like neurotic, choleric uh, behavior, we would everybody would know like, oh my god, this dude is horrible. Like, he's so much fun to observe. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. He wasn't yeah, that horrible. Like... Honestly, I'm not yeah, sure. He was very fun. Yeah, like, honestly, I'm pretty sure relatively, like, he never hurt anybody by doing what he did, which is already a lot more than many actors can claim, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> on and on, <laughs> uh, he was all right. He was a decent human being. He didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> no, he had charisma and charm. He was funny. Yeah, and he yeah. was funny. Uh, I like how in all the movies he always was falling in love, but 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 with like very much taller women than him, <laughs> and very red with a lot of lipstick, like. <laughs> Like, like, super haughty blondes with red lipstick, but age appropriate as well. So that was actually uh, nice. Have you ever heard of uh, Coluche? Coluche, no. Oh my gosh! Uh, to me, he's like one of the. Um, he's a really important figure about mm -hmm. comedy, in French comedy. But the problem is that he's heavily on the left wing of side of things and actually he did magnificent uh political movements during his time like what he was saying is basically that um okay basically he opened something that in france they call the resto du coeur which yeah. is it means uh, the heart restaurant and uh, it was just people feeding poor people and he was part of that whole movement That's from the awesome. yeah he was part of the own. yeah he was part of the movement of the left from the 80s which was very left you know in comparison of nowadays standard obviously but um he definitely was an admirable person and his jokes oh my gosh he he well he makes jokes about society and what's insane is that when you listen to those jokes, they are applicable to Nodai. Like straight up, there is abs there is no nothing that he says that is not applicable to Nodai. It's like shocking, personally, I find. Little point. Like I often notice that comedians, they are clear points. They see into the future. They satirize how the future might go and the future actually goes that way or perhaps like, we are always faced with the same problem and some of us can see it and most of us don't see it and nobody comes with a genius idea of how to solve even one of those problems that comes and comes and comes Okay, Cortell, I want to ask you something. Yes. I have never told you this story. 
We are uh, recording. You do know that. I know. Okay. I know. I know. I do know that. Like I mm, remember. I'm just saying, no, don't go too personal. <laughs> it's not personal. Okay. Mm, I don't know. You never you told me a story. If it's straight up, it's pretty personal, you know. <laughs> okay. So, uh, like some years back, in early 2000s, I have been to Paris, and I have been to Paris with an Austrian friend. So uh, there was a, a cafe near like with the view to Eiffel Tower. I was wearing a, a, a summer black dress, like like very light, but but it should be like very fluffy, but it's black. Yeah, and my friend was wearing a completely blue, blue jeans, blue shorts. And we came to the restaurant, we sat down, we chose, we picked a table with the view to Eiffel Tower. And me being me, Nodrick, offer, like asked, ordered only like the the red wine, but not, not the bottle, but you know, like they, they bring like this kind of yeah. thing. Uh, it's well, like... Probably. I know what you mean. Yeah, something like this. So they bring one for me with a red wine. And my friend said, like, well, I will take the white one. And we did not order any food, no croissant, no cheese, nothing. Just like me, the red one, and he, the white one. And we sat there, looked at the Eiffel Tower, and we were conversing with each other. Me being uh, Russian and speaking with my Russian accent, and him being Austrian speaking with his Austrian accent. Like we tried to speak in English. And the waiters took a huge interest in us. They were like, I could, I could see them gather around and bet, like, w w what country are they coming from? Mm -hmm. Because we did not speak on our native language. We spoke with each other in English, but with accent. But then, Beside us, on the table, came some Asian tourists, a family, a guy, a woman, and two kids. They sat there, and nobody was, uh, nobody was paying attention to them. Those people sat there. On a the table of the coffee house, it was a fancy coffee house, there was, there was a bottle of water and glasses. So those people just like used us already... Uh, <laughs> prepared bottle of water and glasses they drank because it was a hot summer day they drank this water but waiters did not come to them waiters just stood around and kind of absorbed me and my friend like they were super interested in us and yeah uh, the asian family waited they signaled the waiters to, you know, to give the menu or nothing. The waiters ignored the Asian family completely, but they did not come close. So the Asian family stood up, left five euros on a table. As five a euros for what? For yes. the water? Yes. Jesus Christ, they're way too gentle. I would have Yo. just left <laughs> straight Yeah, up. they should have left. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But the waiters. They ignored the five euros. The five euros were lying there on the table, and the were uh, the waiters were still like totally consumed with me and my friend, like me all black, and my friend all blue, drinking red wine and the white wine. Mm -hmm. So, and I will describe you the waiters uh, waiters now. Uh, there was a young girl with curly black hair. There was a tall young guy with shaved head, but you could see that he's like super young with blue eyes, but the head is shaved bald by choice. And there was some other skinny guy with a uh, chipped tooth. And the, the three of them were standing there and just like looking at us. They made bets on it. So those two people, the, the family left, nobody nobody could, and we are slowly, gradually drinking our wines. Then I, I, I caught the eye contact with the tall, bald guy waiter, and I showed him, look at me, look at me, look at me, and I showed him. Mm -hmm. 
and he showed me that that's because me me showed him the five euros and what the fuck and and he showed me that's <laughs> it okay it was a body language conversation me and the tall bald guy then a large group a large like totally like i don't know 10 people french group came on to this coffee house and they looked there is a empty table beside us and us beside and they were like well we should ask the two of us me and my friend to move so they would join the tables and sit yeah. and you know what happened the tall bald waiter came up and kicked them out <laughs> he said in french like he basically said don't fuck with these guys we are into them uh -huh. So he kicked out because the French people were asking us in French to go and move to some table over there because otherwise they cannot join the tables. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So the large group of them people was kicked out of the coffee house because the waiters were super interesting to us. Yeah. So by the end of the of this whole happening, the tall the, the girl came to us and asked hi where are you from and i said i'm from austria and my friend said yeah he's also from austria and she said ah, that doesn't sound right and she left she did not bring us the bill or nothing then the skinny chipped tooth guy came to us and said where are you from and i said I'm from Austria, and this guy is also from Austria. And he said, like, ah, something was not right. Like, it doesn't compute with us. Then by the end of the evening, the tall, bold guy who, with whom I had the eye contact and all the body language conversation, he came to us and said, like, guys, please, I will. it will be for free, the wines and everything. Just please tell us honestly where do you come from <laughs> like what country because they made a fucking bed <laughs> <laughs> they make a they just the white people <laughs> they want to know they need to know <laughs> yeah and Cute. that's why i love i love fucking love french people <laughs> for that. Yeah. yeah so we told them honestly where did we come from and we did not pay for the white wine and the red wine that we ordered <laughs> It was all it. This whole entire story was like a, like a part of the movie. It was so impossible to happen, and it happened. Like I was sitting there wearing my black dress, and my friend wearing his blue outfit, and we were like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, but this story stayed with me forever, forever. I don't have this black dress, although I remember it. It made out of black, li out of linen, but coated black like pure linen black dress like so it's a summer dress like so beautiful and it's such a shame that we have it. but the setting of it the all body language of it because we were all from different countries it's so amazing to me um, why do the french people do that like i cannot understand why would they don't the entire restaurant they did not earn anything that afternoon just to find out where did we come from Later on, I found out that the tall, bold guy was the owner of the restaurant. Yeah, you know, sometimes <laughs> people are curious. That's the way it is. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, no way. <laughs> yeah. Um, should we stop yeah. the stream? Oh, I think okay. it's a good time if you're okay, okay with it. Should we like say goodbye and do the high five? Do you want to touch my bottle? Goodbye. <gasps> high oh, five. wait a second. High five. Would you like to touch my bottle? Do you remember this thing? I have. I can practice it. I'm not sure. I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Cordell. Wait, wait, wait. Let's do it more fun. Oh, no. Wait. Okay. No. Cordell, it was fun in sweater. Okay. I actually like it in sweater. It, the sweater looks more believable. Jude. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> so, Cordell, you officially shaked my world <laughs> couple That's funny. Uh, okay, on these words. <laughs>
Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> good night. Good day. Whatever. Sayonara. Exactly. Au revoir.